All right, so first thing I will say is most of these glucometers come with a 30 gauge lancet. I recommend 28 gauge. They're bigger, dogs have thicker skin, so it's easier to deal with. Uh, the 30 gauge is, is really small, so I like to use bigger ones because dogs have thicker skin. So another thing too is I tell owners is I don't like using the pen because the click tends to stare, scare the dogs. So I just use the needle. I just take the cap off and poke the dog. And those pens often keep you from getting as deep as you need to get. And Callie is a wiggle worm, so I figured you know more owners could you know understand better with a wiggle worm because they're not used to getting it checked. So let me start with the strips. So since most people only have one, I'll do one. I'll start with the glucose. Take it out. Put in the machine first. Do not put blood first and then put it in the machine. And wait for the drop to show up. Where's the drop? Right here. And it's ready. So, and these ones uh, have some pretty good timing on them. So it gives you time to go ahead and do what you need to do. So for me, I like to poke this pad up here that they don't use very much. Um, let's see if she's good for me. Just give a quick poke. Oh, didn't get a good poke. Oh, I did. Just a quick poke, squeeze. Okay, she's not wanting to bleed very good for me, so you can do an additional poke. Or you can even do just a scratch on the surface, and sometimes that's enough. But she's not gonna bleed for me, so. <laughs> so if you can't get blood from that pad, mm -hmm. where else would you take it from? Uh, for my wiggle worms, i.e. little Miss Callie, but there I got enough blood. Well, you've got enough blood there, yes. right? Yes. So for a glucose, you'd still have to get some for the ketone. So here's for the glucose. And there you go. Bing. And then I'll show you for some people that have wiggle worms for dogs and don't like their feet messed with, something I do with Callie quite often, down, down, is that I'll do the ketone this time, is for these wiggle worms, sometimes you might have to hold them down a little, she's a little bit used to it so I don't have to hold her down, is I'll pull up the lip and just give a little poke right there on the inside of the lip. And here's an example of being a wiggle butt, sometimes you gotta restrain them. Oh goodness, you don't have to sit on them but just to keep their hands back when you're doing this as a one-man job. Yeah, so that's a gentle restraint. You're not yeah. sitting all your weight yeah. on the dog or I'm squeezing the dog. I'm squatting over her, but see, I got it. That way I was able to get a good poke, and it bleeds. Yeah, okay. Well, so, how you can do it, oh, sorry. Without an extra set of hands. She's good. Oh. She's nervous. That's good. And she's off. Yeah. Good girl, Callie. Good girl, Callie. A lot of the big dogs, especially the, the older ones, they tend to have hair loss on the back of their elbows. This one doesn't have too much hair loss because he's a he's spoiled and gets beds all the time. But um, and just like our elbows, if you pinch your elbow, you don't feel much of that. So they don't tend to feel much of that. So if you Got my glucose ready. You just pick an area on here, squeeze it together, Oop. poke it. See, he didn't even notice. And then squeeze it. And you've got plenty of blood. Wow. Yep. And then here we go. Wait a few seconds for that to come up. And he's 59. It's a good bleeding area. Is that your favorite spot on an older dog? Yes. As most of them don't even feel it. And I do your ketone check. That's perfect. Yep. So what's that called on the dog? Is that the elbow? They're callus, yes. It's, it's like a callus on an elbow. Yes. So most of them don't even feel that. Right. Well, I guess it's like a callus. Zero point three. Where's that? Zero oh, point let me three. just get a picture of that. Cool. That's a good boy, boy. The other place that you can do, I'm not a huge fan of it because it doesn't bleed very much, but you can do the ear. And then uh, another question, so I'll knock out two birds with one stone, is a lot of people try to do the ear 
Arnold doesn't have a lot of hair in here, but a lot of dogs like the Pomeranians and stuff or long-haired Chihuahuas have a lot of hair in here. So a little trick I've learned over my years as a vet tech is you use, um, you can use, I'm gonna use some antibiotic ointment. So, and just rub a little bit on there. That way, when it plasters the hair down, and then also when you poke it, it will pool, it'll puddle on top of the ointment instead of soaking into the hair. So let's see if we can get a good sample on Arnold. Oh goodness. Let me touch it before. There we go. And he doesn't like it, so. As you see, is it's not soaking into his hair. He does have some, and it just kind of pools on top of it instead of chasing after blood. And like I said, it doesn't bleed as much as a normal stick, so I'm not a big fan of it. Especially you need a lot of blood for both of them. The calluses on the elbows are my favorite place. It bleeds more and they're less affected by it. Number two, my number two favorite is the inside of the lip. It bleeds pretty good and they don't seem to, it doesn't seem to bother them as much. Next one I would go for is the pad. I try to avoid these pads, they're pretty sensitive because I usually aim for this pad up here. Those are, that's my top and then last resort is ear. But okay. like I said, not a big fan of the ear. It doesn't bleed very much, huh Arnold? So Amber's gonna show us how to um, restrain a smaller dog. Especially that's got some sass to her. That's got some sass to her. Yes. So Amber shows you the bigger dogs. So this so, is when you're taking blood ketones, blood glucose on a smaller dog. She is, she's very fast and she will bite. If it's not her idea, it's not a good one. So what we do is we pretend, she's trying to take my shirt off, is we pretend we're gonna hug her. And just, just hug her. You don't have to squeeze too hard. And that leaves you access to that there elbow. And even though she doesn't have calluses, the skin, you look for the little, uh, it's got a little calic there. You can poke right in the middle of that. But you also have the back feet. You can poke a pad. pad. Okay, cool. So just hug them. And they, they think they're safe. <laughs> she's, she's my difficult one and she will bite. So. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, All thank right. you. Good girl, Izzy. Can I show how we restrain you? Peanut's an easy one. So all we have to do with him, you lay him like a baby, huh? And then you just give him a nice hug, and you talk to him, and he doesn't notice when somebody comes for his pad. So you can do his pad mm -hmm. with, I guess, your right hand? Or you do it with your mm -hmm. right hand? And usually I'll sit and I'll have him in my lap and just poke him. Okay. Hmm. Good. Good boy. Easy peasy.